to our third and final workshop um, in our Life Pebbles today. So we've spent the last two weeks um, creating our clay pieces and now this week we'll be um, painting them and varnishing them and also making our little symbol sheet as well. Oops. So if you're um, here, it's lovely um, to see you. If um, you have permission from your parents, if you're on Facebook Live, then it would be lovely um, to say hi, hello. <laughs> um, and then if you have any questions throughout, do just comment. I'll try and keep an eye on the comments and then answer them as soon as I can. Also, this is a space where we can share ideas. So if you have any ideas that you'd like to contribute, it would be really lovely to hear. Um, I know last week was fantastic for that. We got lots of interaction and lots of sharing of ideas. And I was inspired by the end of it. Um, so I'll run through what we need today. So we're going to need our clay hand that we made last week. Okay, so that will have dried by now. We'll also need our pinch pot that we made in week one, along with our um, stones that we illustrated on last week. So we've got those. And then we'll also need a blank piece of card. Hello, it's lovely to see, see you here. Um, so we need a blank piece of card. We'll need some greaseproof paper. We'll want some coloured pens, some paints because we're going to be painting our hand and possibly our pinch pot today. So we'll need some of um, some acrylic paint is what I use. We'll need a paintbrush, not too thin, um, because we're going to need to cover a lot of area. And some PVA glue. This is what we're going to use for the glaze. Okay. I'm just going to scroll down so I can see some comments. Lovely. Okay. So what we're going to start off with today is we're going to start off with uh, the hand that we created. We're going to start by painting that. So if you make sure you have clothes on that you don't mind if they get a little bit painty. Um, and same with your work surface. So you might like to cover it in newspaper. Okay. So I'm going to actually use um, my greaseproof paper as a space to paint on. So I'm just going to cut a little section of this. You can use newspaper, it's just sometimes when you leave things on newspaper to dry, it sticks the newspaper and peels the newspaper off, whereas greaseproof paint is a bit better for avoiding that problem. So I've just got a little bit of greaseproof paper. And then we're going to take our hand that we created. So you won't be able to see there as much, but you'll know from the patterns that you did last week. Um, I think we used broccoli and all sorts. It was wonderful to see. So we're going to start by painting. I'm also going to use my greaseproof paper as my paint palette. So if you've got a paint palette, you can use that. But I'm just going to squirt a little bit of my paint on here. You can choose whatever colour you like, if of course you'd like to paint it at all. It may be that you don't want to paint it, it may be that you want to leave it the colour that it is and actually just add a little bit of a glaze to make it shiny. So we could do that with glue. So instead of, if you'd like to do that, instead of squirting out paint, you can squirt out some glue and paint it with uh, PVA glue instead. I'm going to be using gold. Be nice to hear what other colours people are using. And I'm actually going to cover my whole piece in gold. I quite like the effect that it gave on this one. I then covered the back actually of this one in like an orangey red. So I'm going to pick one side and then after that's mostly dry I'm going to turn over and do the other side. So with the gold paint, the one that I'm using anyway, I'll need two layers of this to get a really nice bold colour, or even more. So you have to be quite patient. So when it's first applied, you might still be able to see the white colour. 
if you've used white clay or if you've used like a terracotta clay, you might still be able to see the brownie colour underneath. Um, that's okay, that's what, that's what happens with lots of paint, you just need to do lots of layers and build it up. Okay. So at the moment, um, oh, I'm just scrolling down to see the comments. Oh, we've got a gold mix with orange to make a bronze. <gasps> oh, that sounds cool. I might try that. That's a really lovely idea. Wow, right. I've got like an orangey red acrylic here. I might just mix a little bit to see if I like it first. If you've got some clay from um, last week, some dried up clay, maybe a bit of clay that you forgot to pack away or something, um, then you can always try the colours on that first and see if you like it. Oh, it's a lovely bronzy colour, isn't it? Oh, yes. How lovely. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> right. So I'm going to continue with painting this. You'll be able to see that where you make the brush strokes, it is visible. So if you just paint like that, for example, then at the end you will be able to see kind of that um, not so neat effect. So if that's the effect that you want and you can just, you know, paint like that, that's fine. Um, but if you're wanting a smoother effect, then if you just use your paintbrush in one direction, then you'll get a nice even cover on your piece. You will be able to see the brush strokes more on your first layer, and then as you build up the layers, it will become less visible. Oh, we've got blue and gold. Oh, is that blue and gold as in mixing them together, or are you doing some of it blue and some of it gold? What are we what are we deciding on? Because you don't have to paint it all one colour, it could you can do patterns on it as well. Say you want to do the fingernails a different colour, or maybe some parts of your pattern you want to stand out, you might like to paint. You can paint really intricately as well. Um I'm just going with the one bold colour. So for those that, um, if you're joining us this week and you haven't joined us the previous two weeks, um, you can watch these videos um, again. So if you just um, scroll down on ArtCore's Facebook page, um, they'll be available there. And so at the moment, so this is our third workshop, and this is the final one of our Life Pebbles workshop. So Life pebbles um, can help us talk through things, um, perhaps um, round the table at dinner time with our families. It can help us bring up conversations. Um, so we discussed in week one about the different symbols and what they mean. So we've got um, the heart here. That could represent love, so maybe something that you really love doing that day. And um, I've chosen to do like a little uh, leaf sprig. So um, it would be uh, like, a na like a nature, maybe something that you've really appreciated in the nature. There's also a eye with a tear because sometimes um, really sad things can happen. We might want to talk about those. So the concept of this is that we'll have our bowl and our hand, um, maybe in the middle of the table, and then it might be that each of your family members would like to choose one, um, pop it in the hand, and then talk about something, um, how they're feeling and what their thoughts are. Of course, it might just be that you want to um, use it for a different purpose. So these are all just techniques that you can learn, and it might be that you want to use your hand and bowl for something completely different. And that's absolutely okay. So I'm almost done with this side. Okay. Just scroll up again. Right, how are we doing? I really like using gold paint. I don't know about other people. Um, but it's a, 
I really, really enjoy it. So I've pretty much finished this side now. What we'll do is we're going to carefully paint around all of the in-betweeny bits as well. So making sure that none of the area is unpainted. So make sure you do all the sides as well. It's okay if some of it goes on your um, newspaper or your greaseproof paper underneath. That's what it's there for. Like I mentioned before, don't worry if you're not getting a super even cover now. Um, really, it's absolutely okay. It will become um, a lot more of a, a cleaner, smoother finish once we've done more layers. And we'll do those layers once it's dried. Oh, that's lovely. You made two. One for pebbles and one for your rings. Oh, how lovely. Two pinch pots. Yeah, it may be that you have clay left over and that you can use the techniques to create lots of other artwork that you can use. So now I've finished the inside, we can either leave it to dry and then do the other side or what I am going to do, because it's curved, It'll just balance like this and it won't get the underside um, all smudgy because it's not resting on there. You've given it you've given it a lift up. So I'm going to paint this side now. It, you don't have to paint the underside, but I'm just going to do a layer as well. So in this workshop today. We'll just do the one layer of paint and then after a few hours, once it's dried a little bit or you can leave it till tomorrow, you'll be able to do your second layer and then if you feel like it needs a third layer, then go ahead and do a third as well until you're pleased with your creation. So it may be that um, you've finished all of your life pebbles and you've illustrated them all. Or it may be that you are still thinking about um, what you'd like to put on your life pebbles. If you want to put any of your um, suggestions in the comment section, then you can. And then it might give other people ideas as well as to what they would like. So on my one, for example, with the life pebbles here, and this is what we'll be drawing today in a little bit. So I did the um, sunset or sunrise as hope. Did like a hand with a little heart in as care. I did a tear as loss. Um, a little person like this and a heart above as thankful. A love heart as love. A candle as remembering and then a sprig um, as new beginnings. That's just my little um, key for my pieces, but it might be that you're symbolised something completely different. So if you have anything you'd like to share, either now or later, then it would be lovely to hear. Of course, the lovely thing about this is you can always add more life pebbles to your pieces. It might even be that you ask your family if they would like um, to add to add anything to your to your life pebble set. Okay. So mine's still a little bit streaky because I've only done the one layer, but I'm going to leave this to dry now. Don't worry if you are still painting yours, especially if you're doing patterns or anything like that, and um, you can keep going. Once you have finished, do make sure to give your paintbrush a wash in sink, 
And I've just got, I've just got a little pot of water here, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wash in here. And I'll show you now what we're going to do with our pebbles. So at the moment, they're just like a matte colour. Okay, the pebbles that we made. And if you want them a little bit glossy, this is where we can use our PVA glue. So I've got some glue here. Oh, lovely. So and one idea is a note for musical and drama stuff because we have mu musicians and actresses in the family. Oh, fantastic. That's such a lovely idea, really personal. So I'm going to get another piece of this grease proof paper. We still want some more for um, when we do our clay projects next, next week and then um, after next week we miss a week because it's half term holidays and then we're back on again at the same time for our clay monsters. So we need to save a little bit of greaseproof paper for rolling it out. Okay, I'm doing the oaken for the back of my hand. Ah, oh. such lovely ideas, wow. Okay, so um, with our PVA glue, I'm just going to undo the top and I'm just going to squirt a little bit. Oh, in fact, I don't think this one's been opened before. So, it may be that you need to release the top. Okay, so make sure your PVA glue will squirt out. There we go. And again, I'm using this almost like a paint palette. So I'm just going to use my paintbrush. I'm using the same paintbrush that I've used for paint, but I'm going to make sure I give it a really, really good wash afterwards. Um, because there's nothing worse than when you get to your paintbrush next time and it's all hard because it's not being washed after gluing. So I'm just, at the moment, PVA gluing all over. And you'll see that with some types of felt tip pens, the ink may start to run. And um, so do make sure that um, you give your brush a clean if it has got some colour on, so that it doesn't spread the colour all around your stone. But it gives it a really nice, shiny effect, I think. Okay. So, after I've done one, you might be able to see a slight shine on here. I'm just going to leave it on my greaseproof paper and go on to my next one. So I'm going on to tier one now. And get some glue and I've chosen to do the back and the front of mine so it's all really shiny did anyone decide to paint theirs gold last week is that something that anybody did like this one here if you did you can illustrate on it today or if you didn't and you want to do one gold I don't know what I'll use. Maybe I'll use a gold one for, um, for if there's something that kind of doesn't fit all the other categories. I might pick up the gold one and share something. So yeah, these are really nice way of opening up conversations about things, about our day. Or even if we just want to think through, through things for ourselves, it can be a really nice reflection um, at the end of the day about you know what went well, what we found difficult, what we're looking forward to. So 
So again, these are going to need some time to dry, so I'm just going to leave them on the greaseproof paper overnight. Depending on how many you've got, depend on how long this takes you, if you've got loads and loads and loads, <laughs> then um, <laughs> it might take you a while. I guess you could keep going with symbols, all sorts of different ones, couldn't you? Just keep going and keep going. Oh, so we had a few gold ones last week. So, so can you can you shout out names? You what what um as in people that are commenting is that? Because sometimes people's names are different from on the um on the chat just because they might be using their family's ones, or is it the names of these? Trying to see. Okay, so I'm on my second to last one now. Don't worry if you haven't got onto your last one yet. Just going through these so that you can um, see what we can we can um, do. And if this project takes longer than this forty five minutes, then you can carry on. Okay, lovely jubbly. Okay, so once these are finished, I'm just going to leave these over here. And then give your hands a wash. And I've just got some water that I'm going to wash my hands in here. And make sure to give your paintbrush a really good wash as well. Okay. Right, so now um, we're going to draw our symbol sheet. This might be something that if you're still doing your other things, you can just listen to instead. So here, if I just hold this up close, okay. So it's a picture of um, our symbols that we drew on our life pebbles and I've copied them over to here so that we've got a, um, a symbol sheet that we can refer to because obviously it, it, people interpret different symbols as um, different meanings so there's no right or wrong with these it might be that like the sprig, the leaf sprig it might um, symbolise growth to one person, it might um, symbolise new hope to another person, or life, or anything like that. So you can choose what all of your symbols mean. And so we're going to get um, a blank sheet of card, okay? I've used paper, uh, sorry, card rather than paper, just so that it's a bit more sturdy, because you want to um, keep this with your hand and your pot. So on our sheet of paper we can draw out the number of life pebbles that we have. So it may be that in the future you want to add more, in which case say you have six for now, you might just want to leave some room at the bottom of your card. So I'm just going to draw six circles here and I'm going to leave some space next to it to write out um, the meaning of the symbol. So I'm just going to draw six, they're kind of overly, overly circly shapes. So these are the first two, for example, with a little space either side. I'm just drawing these out as my little symbol sheet. Okay. 
and then I'm going to copy, and it's okay if we don't get them exact, I'm going to copy the symbols that I've got here onto my little chart. So I did one of mine as the sunrise. I wonder, did anyone else do ones that are really personal to their family? Like we said about the, the musicians and, and other ones. Have we got any other personal ones? I might do like a, a paw print actually on um, one that I haven't yet done. Maybe I could do that on the gold for my cats. <laughs> that could symbolise my my cats that you may have heard were meowing in the background a little bit earlier. <laughs> okay. So I'm just drawing on here. So like so, you can see I've just done these two so far and then I'm going to write next to it um, maybe in a thinner, you could use a pencil or a pen just to write down the symbol that goes with it. So these are the ones so far. Oh, so Eileen, you've done your cat in gold. Ah, is that a gold um, stone or is that you've drawn it in gold? Which one of, which one of those did you choose? Okay, and I'm going to go on to the sprig. And of course, if you decide that you'd want to adapt and remove some of your um, pebbles and change them for other ones, then you can do that as well. It's nothing that's fixed in stone here. Okay. So these are three of them. Oh, I did it in paint. Lovely. And um, so here we are. Um, just like this one, this is the finished one, okay? So keep going with that until you're happy with your symbol sheet. And then um, after you finish that, you'll have finished. So it may be that you want to do um, another layer of paint on your hand. It may even be that you want to do and paint on your pinch pot as well. So, for example, with this one, it might be that I um, do some kind of pattern following the pattern of the top. So I could do um, just little decorations around here, maybe. I could do this in pen or I could use paint. So you can decorate this too if you would like. And so yes, I hope you um, enjoy using these uh, Life Pebble sets and enjoy opening up questions and discussing things with people. Um, and so now we've got a little bit more time, so I'm going to go on to another project. Um, so it may be that you just want to listen to this bit whilst you finish off your Life Pebble set. But it's just another idea, I thought we have a little bit more time. Let's use the techniques that we learnt last week when we were cutting out the hand. Why don't we cut out some leaves? So these are ones that I did earlier today, so they're still drying. Um, but you might just be able to see the veins in here. Okay. So um, I got a leaf from outside. It was a geranium leaf they've got really good veins. So this is just one that I found in my garden. 
This video is recorded, so if you just want to um, listen and then you can come back to it after, um, don't worry, you don't have to remember all of this. It's just a little extra workshop that I thought I'd pop in at the end. So, at the moment these are not being painted. But I've done a little geranium leaf set, this one's without stalk. Okay. And so what we do for these is, if you've got some clay, I've used white clay for this, and it may be that you choose to paint these afterwards, or it may be that you choose to leave them plain, or now you know about the PVA to glaze it over and make it all shiny, you might choose to do that. I've got my greaseproof paper. And I'm just going to cut a little bit of clay off of here. Hopefully you wrapped it up really well from last week and left it in a cool dark place so that it doesn't go dry. Now I'm going to do these leaves thinner than what we did our hand because I think it's really nice if the leaves are really delicate does mean that they're more fragile and easier to break, so we have to be more careful. So it's totally your choice if you want them a bit chunkier. I did a chunkier leaf here compared to the thinner one. Okay, so it's your choice what you'd like to do. But we can always experiment with doing um, a really thin one and see how it turns out. So I'm just kneading my clay, making it nice and pliable and then I'm just going to roll it out. So this is similarly, um, this is similar to what we did with our hand when we cut around our hand. So I'm rolling it out nice and thin. If you're finding it hard to roll you can stand up then I'm going to lay my geranium leaf face upwards because you can see on here all the veins are on the back. Okay, that's where all the texture is. So I'm just going to lay my leaf down on here and I'm going to hold the stalk and meanwhile I'm just going to push around all of the edges and making sure that all of those little veins in the leaves are creating texture on our clay. So making sure I've pushed all around. If it's been wet outside and raining, it might, you might just want to dry your leaf a little bit first, just with some paper towel so it's not really wet. Okay, if I just... Hold this up so it looks like this at the moment, okay? And now what I'm going to do is similar to when we did our hand and we drew around our hand to create a little indent, that's what we're going to do now with our leaf. This leaf could even become part of your life pebble set if you would like to. Um, just using the techniques that we've learnt and applying it to something else. So I'm now just making an indent all around the leaf because at the moment the leaf edge is really really faint. So I'm just going around it with my pencil or you can use a cocktail stick or something similar just to create a bolder outline. So there's a bolder outline now. And then I'm just going to get a knife, it's not a very sharp one. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edge. I find it easier instead of instead of going back and forth like you'd normally use a knife, that'll just make the clay um, misshape. So I'm I'm just going in and just almost prodding it all the way around all the way around the outside making a little indent 
So if I lift this up now, so you can see. Okay, so I'm just making a little indent all the way around. And you can do this with, with whatever you would like. So it might be that you choose to do a leaf, or it might be that you choose to do something completely different. Imprint something else, then draw around it, and then cut out with your knife. Now with the stalk, that's the really, really delicate part of the leaf. Because it's so slim, it's more likely to break and fall off on our clay. So we're going to have to be extra careful with that bit. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. And just pick it up. Okay, and then all we're going to do is gently peel the outside away. There we go. This bit of clay you can still reuse, just make sure you wrap it up really tight in cling film. You could even spray it with a tiny bit of water to keep it uh, nice and moist. And then after I've peeled this off, you'll see there's like a little, there's a texture around the edge. It's actually quite a nice texture. <laughs> so you can leave it like that, especially because it's all the way around. That looks, I quite like that. Um, or, if you want to smooth it off, you can, and we would do that just like we would the hand. So I've got a little pot of water, I would just dip my finger in there, and then just gently go around the outside, smoothing it down. We obviously won't want to smooth the surface down of the leaf because that's where we've got our gorgeous patterns that we've imprinted. So just around the outside and then being extra careful with the stalk. Because we've gone through quite a lot today, it might be that you have some questions after this workshop. In which case, feel free to um, message me directly at Flying Fish Studio, or you can comment on here, and I'll try and get back to you. Okay. And then next week, if I just introduce you to what we're doing so that you, you know what's coming up, it's always exciting to know what's coming up in our next project. So again, the same time next Thursday at 4.45, we're going to be doing dream catchers. So we're going to be creating these. I'm going to be using um, some terracotta clay, so some brown clay for mine, but you can use either white or any other color clay that you have. We're going to be using air dry clay again. And then we have a break, and then we're going to be doing our clay monsters. Okay. For some of the intricate bits, especially around the stalk, I'm going to just lift it up. So around the stalk, we have to be particularly careful. If we smooth it down, we don't want to just pull it off by accident. Sometimes a cocktail stick can help, help with this. So we can just smooth it down especially where the actual leaf, the main leaf shape meets the stalk, just here. You can smooth that down with a cocktail stick on your paper. If some of your veins on your leaf are not quite um, coming through properly, then you can use your cocktail stick to make them more prominent. Um, I'd advise probably not to press too hard because 
the veins are quite delicate and it's nice to see some of them kind of a little bit visible but not totally not as bold as the main veins so I'm just going over it really gently and I think with these I might end up um, glazing them at some point so glazing them with the PVA glue but you can paint them if you'd like I've seen some lovely gold leaves painted before and you can of course shape them so just like we did with our hand you can um, curl them you can make them wavy okay so you decide um, if you do end up going onto the leaves you can style it how you'd like there are so many different leaves out there um, that you can shape and if you even want to hang them up then you could um, maybe use like a cocktail stick to pop a little hole in there so this is before it's um, dry so I've just popped a little hole in the side okay here and then I'll be able to thread it through and hang it somewhere okay so that's another idea <laughs> I love I love it when people share ideas I've really enjoyed sharing on the chat today it's been really nice so that's fab that's the end of our workshop today and um, if you have any questions at all it would be so nice to hear from you um, it's really lovely to see any photographs of the pieces that you've made as well if you um, or your parents and carers are happy to share them that would be really lovely um, we can get lots of inspiration from each other so yes I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you next week for our Dreamcatcher workshop. Okay, thank you, bye.